Very good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Mystic Pool Podcast. I'm Yolanda Catlin, and former presenter on the TV network Al Jihadi. I'm here to interview my next guest, which is uh, Dr. Frankenstein von Bismarck. He's a dream doctor, a dream interpretist, and uh, parapsychologist. Good evening, doctor. How are you? Good evening. That's is good, sir. Uh, in, in English, please, if, if you would, doctor. A uh, very good evening to you, Yolanda. I would like to say hello to all the guests and especially to all the fellow hermeticists out there because I want to say we are all good friends and we can get along nicely just as long as we stay in the right frame of mind. That is good and that is positive and we always have the good vibes as we have in Germany. Okay, that's that's great. Uh, now let's stay on point. What are we uh, What are we talking about uh, here when you when you talk about Galen? Last last time you're on the show, you were, you were talking about a guy called Galen, and I just like to understand what what did Galen mean when he was talking about medicine and that kind of thing. Certainly, Yolanda. Yeah, I will talk about this if you want. Well, Galen was a very interesting character. His idea of hygiene, uh, which is he gay in ancient Greek was a kind of health or soundness of the body and the mind. He believed that the health is the opposite of disease, yet that both health and disease belong to the same family, just as the god Apollo is also the god of medicine, he is also the god of disease. It is just like when you get a vaccine uh, the, against the malaria, they actually give you a small amount of malaria in the pill, and that builds up your immune system so that you don't get malaria. Well, that, that's great, Doctor. It's actually remarkably modern. Uh, yeah, 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 but it's uh, second century. Uh, the medicine has changed, but I stick to the old doctors, the ancient ways of Hippocrates and Galen. So, um, what, was, uh, what was Galen's uh, idea of Hippocrates? Well, it's the opposite are the cure of opposites. It is to do with the balancing of the four elements, the balancing of the humors. So, in the ancient world, you had four kinds, which were fire, earth, air, and water. And these were to be balanced in the same way that Bardonists also balance the four humors when they do their work with soul mirrors and things like that. Well, wow, that's, that's fascinating, Doctor. Uh, it's actually quite deep. I, I was expecting some quack, crazy German to come on the show, but in fact, uh, that's actually quite deep. So, anyway, tell us a bit more about, uh, about Galen and, and his, uh, his ideas, specifically when it comes to dreams. Well, when Galen was 17 years old, he had a dream, a vision of the god Asclepius, who saved him, and he was warned in the dream not to go on campaign with the emperor Marcus Aurelius. A certain spirit, Daemon, in ancient Greek, urged Galen to dream that he must complete a book he had begun on the optic nerve. He sincerely believed in the power of foresighted divination, probably due to the fact that he was both into Pythagorean philosophy and the philosophy of Plato. Wow, that's, that's fascinating, Dr. Uh, could, you, uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Could you elaborate on that for a little bit? Certainly, yes. Yeah, Yolda. Yeah, yeah. Now, we have to understand this in context, because Galen Mott wrote very many works, and these works, they are not available in English. You cannot read them in English. You have to study your Latin and your ancient Greek, specifically your ancient Greek. My Greek is not that good. I study many Latin, but luckily for me, there is a good Latin translation done of the entire corpus of Galen's work. So if you understand Latin, you understand ancient Greek, you can understand the ancient art of medicine much more than any person who just relies on English translation. Now, we must understand this thing in context. For example, in another book, Galen was not always consistent in his writings. He sometimes discredited the other doctors for having put their face in dreams. This again harks back to the idea of Hippocrates, that were more scientists than they were magicians. So, in order to maintain his credibility, I believe, and I understand this is only my opinion, that 
he may have said this to make sure that he had the authority as a doctor in the ancient world. Yet, on one occasion, he actually put faith in the patient's dream, a course of cooling medication to cool down the humors, to balance the humors, so that the patient was in a calm and good state of mind and could see clearly into the future. Freud had dreamed. Now, I don't listen to Freud, I don't read Carl Jung, I don't listen to this new nonsense. I said, everything in the dream is to do with sex or is to do with, with a, a maternal complex of wanting to kill your father. I do not prescribe to these ideas. What I do do is I read the ancients, the ancient doctors, because I believe they were closer to the spiritual, which we cannot see with our normal perception. But in the dream world, as is written in the first line of the Corpus Hermeticum, that state between the dream world and the normal world, there we can achieve a kind of meditation. So we can go out of body, like a lucid dream. Well, that, that's, that's really quite fascinating, Doctor. Uh, wow. I'm blown away. Uh, but, um, I'd like to, uh, to, to bring in another guest now, if that's okay. And we're going to bring in uh, Daisy on the show. Uh, she's a paranormal, a psychic. Uh, she uh, runs an occult bookstore in New Orleans. And I'd like for you, if it's okay, to just ask Daisy a about her questions of her dream last night and what they may have meant in the ancient authorities that you're, you're familiar with. Hi there. It's great to meet you, Doctor. I'm, I'm a big fan. I, I gotta say, I, I read some of your stuff and I even got one or two of your books in my store. Well, it's nice to meet you, young lady. And uh, tell me, would you like a couch to lie on? Uh, no, no, I'm good. I'm just gonna sit here in my chair. But, but, I, but I'll tell you about my dream, uh, if, if, you want, if you want. Certainly, young lady. Now just relax, think clearly, and imagine that you are back in your dream. Tell me, do you keep a dream diary? I don't, but I've got a pretty good memory. I, I've always had a pretty good memory. I'm not particularly well educated, but it's just one of my gifts. It's part of being a psychic. Well, okay, if you do not keep a dream diary, you can at least tell me what you can remember about your dream, and I will try to interpret for you properly. Well, I was at a party with a friend, and we were at a an all-night festival with all these pagans, and it was such fun. Oh, I can't tell you how. We were dancing, and everybody was just relaxed and having a good time, and it was a kind of like a sacred surrounding meeting of all these enlightened beings, and, but then it started to rain, and I, I began to get really cold, and then I saw a bat, and the bat came down, and it flew over me, and I can't interpret what this bat meant. I, I brought a couple of books with me from my store just to try and find out what it meant, but I thought I'd ask you, Doctor, and just before I woke up, a little mole came right out of the ground, and, and I, I don't know what it means. Could, could you tell me? Certainly, young lady. So, just to recap, you are at a party, or a kind of mystic ritual with other pagan women, having fun, and then suddenly it started to get cold and raining, and you saw a bat come down, and then there was a mole. Have I got this right? Yes, yes, yes you got it just right. So, so what does it mean, Doctor? I, I, I can't make head or tail of it. Well, in Artemidorus, in his only book, in the only book which survives from the ancient world, which is a classical world, there are others, there are the Egyptian books, there are also in the, uh, certain tablets written in Cuneiform in Mesopotamia, th th he says in his interpretation of dream is that the mind is simply recalling the cold of the day. When you dream of snow or ice, uh, it usually has no real significance. However, when there is a torrential downpour, this is seen as a bad sign, and this is taken from the writings of Hippocrates and also Artemidorus. So, we may say that the rain 
is not particularly bad because you said that the rain was so torrential, it was not snowing, it was only a little bit cold. But if there's lots of rain, a lots of hail, this signifies something more serious. And he quotes in the book, he says, this means that there is an excretion of moisture and flames that has occurred in the corresponding outermost parts of the mind, the body, and the soul. Okay, that's so, so it doesn't mean an awful lot. In fact, young lady, it means quite a lot because the other aspects of the dream, for example, the festivities, before it started raining, this is very interesting because in book three of Artemidor's work, he says that if you are poor, I am taking you are not a rich person, you, you are not a, a person of a means, you are not an important person particularly, you said you grew up on the trailer park and that you were in the swamp for many years with the hobos making some moonshine. That, that's right, I, I don't make a lot of money, but, I, but I'm better now because I don't have to live outdoors anymore. My life is really quite stable, and I haven't led always the, uh, the easiest life. I understand that, young lady, and I empathize with you. Now, if you are poor, this is very auspicious for your dream because Artemidorus says in his books that this means you will gain prosperity and the action acquisition of properties, and also it has been observed that it will remove all of your anxiety and your troubles from one who is afraid of something. This is very good. It's a very auspicious omen. Well, thanks, Doctor. That's I, When I came in here, I was all worried because it was a hell of a dream last night. Things were going so well, and then all of a sudden that back came along in the rain and that weird mole. I didn't know what to think, but you put me in a good mood, and right now I'm buzzing. That is not all, young lady. There's more news. Oh, oh, oh really? Is it, is it good news, Doctor? Well, uh, for example, the, uh, the bat that you saw, the bat is the only creature of the sky among the owls and the other sections in Artemidora's book which says it is auspicious. So this is a good sign, but it probably means that you are pregnant. I'm pregnant? Yeah, yeah, it's a proper sign. Or oh, you will be pregnant. You have a, a sign. Uh, it's a, a psychic. Uh, you, know, you are a highly psychic medium, so it's probably that you saw a sign of your future, perhaps of your future lover. I don't know if you have a lover, but it will mean that. Why is that, Doctor? Why, why, why will I become pregnant? Well, the bat is the only creature that does not lay eggs like the other birds. It gives birth to its young live. They have milk in the breasts, and they raise their own offspring. So this is a very auspicious sign. Artemidorus wrote this many, many years ago, nearly 2,000 years ago, he said this, and this is still as true today as it was back then. Well, that really is quite fascinating, Doctor. I, I, I'm blown away by that. But, but what about the mole? This is not such a good sign. The mole is um, anyone wanting to lie low will give themselves away. The mole also betrays itself by its own activity and is often caught. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is the, the, the signification of the dream. So let's talk about some more things to do with dreams and uh, particularly the psychic aspect. We're interested in the paranormal. Yeah, yeah, yeah I will talk about this uh, a, a little bit more. Is the sources are very interesting. We have very few sources. We have Artemidorus, we have Philostratus the Elder and his life of a Palladonis of Tyana. I mentioned it passing. We also have on diagnosis from dreams, a uh, short tract, uh, they say. And yet, since we yield to any prophecies in what we say, we come to distinguish these out of the body experience. It is not easy to say how they will be done. That is my own translation. That is absolutely fascinating, Doctor. I gotta tell you, that, that, that's really quite something. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, Galen only mentions diagnosis once in his own diagnosis from dreams, where it is qualified by an adjective, duscolos, which means it is difficult to explain. You could translate the sentence as 
But since the psyche is not visible to the condition of the body in sleep, for our part we reflect upon the dream and the habitual intercourse of passing through some others alone by day. But out of them at the point he or she, the dreamer, has clearly been shown a prophecy under the power of the ordeal. It's beforehand, and this will be seen by experience. And therefore, the diagnosis is difficult to produce from the body doing things seen in sleep. That is really quite fascinating. You just blew my mind. Now, if you wouldn't mind, I, I thought I'd bring along my own couple of books from my store, and I'd just like to have a look at what the moderns said about this whole thing. Because I'm, I'm not entirely sure of them old boys. I, I, just, I just don't think he's got it quite right. Like, for instance, I got this one book here from my store. It's called Raphael's Dictionary of Dreams. And it says right here that if I go to a festival, bearing in mind I woke this up, as soon as I woke up, I checked this out. It said something quite different in, in, in my book. How do you mean, young lady? What is it in your dream that you are afraid of? Well, according to the modern dream book, to dream that you're in a celebration is a sign that you have to remain at home because of an illness of one of your children. And I will suffer considerably from a loss of respect from friends, and I will suffer from headaches. Yeah, yeah, these are the moderns. They know nothing. They are not the ancients. The ancients were much closer to the spirits, well, they didn't have the MTV, they didn't have the Game Boys, they didn't have the things that they have, the, the, the horseless carriage and the other things like the Industrial Revolution, they were more in tune with nature. Well, that's really quite fascinating, Dr. Rohn. Let's talk a bit about your experiences with dreams and how, oh, hang, hang on, we, we, we've got we got a caller. We got one caller. Um, I'm just going to take the call. Uh, do you mind, Doctor? Nine, nine, not at all. I'd like to listen to you. Uh, any any call, any questions you may have, you may open and ask to me freely. Hi, welcome to the show. Uh, who's this? Well, it's Don. Don Malfoni. You met me the other day. We were coming to the studio. Oh yeah, I remember you. you you're the guy from Cambridge, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, you got a take on this? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I got. A f it's, it's fake. It's all fake. Okay, uh, doctor, you got an answer to that? Yeah, yeah, I, I think uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a valid viewpoint. Uh, everybody is entitled to their view. Uh, but uh, what kind of evidence is there for it being a falsification or, or, or some kind of uh, falsification by perhaps an ancient authority as though they were kidding themselves and leaving something specifically for conspiracy theorists in the future? No, no, it's fake, mate. It's fake. It's controlled opposition. What they're teaching you is wrong, right? They're teaching you wrong because everything they teach you at that school, what you went to, that's for your brainwashing, mate. You don't understand. Yeah, it's fake. All the documents is fake. You watch your news, it's fake. All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see your point of view, uh, but uh, I cannot say I agree with it. Uh, you are perfectly entitled to your own opinion, but I tend to give credence to the ancient authorities. So if you will permit me, I, I would like to counter your argument. No, no, but you can't, mate. You can't. It's fake. It's all fake. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I, I, I cut off the line there for a reason because I don't think that Don Malfoni has anything else to say on that other than that the entire thing is falsified and that it's controlled by the mainstream media to which I used to belong to. I was on the network, Al Jihadi, and I think he has a rather different take on things than, say, Galen or Hippocrates, which I'm really interested in, Doctor. Would you like to talk more about this? Nine, nine, I've given you enough time already. I am very tired and I wish to retire. Daisy, what are you doing this evening? Um, I'm not up to much. Would you like to come back to my laboratory? No, no, thank you. I, 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 somebody's picking me up after here and I've got to go straight back to New Orleans. Very well, I thought I would ask you, young lady. Uh, well, I suppose I'd best go back to my laboratory and continue my experiments. It has been wunderbar, wunderbar. Ein tausendjähriges Reich. 
Okay, so uh, that about wraps it up for the show. That was all done extempore. That means on the spur of the moment, and it wasn't scripted at all, and I just thought I'd say goodbye to everybody, and uh, what a great show. We'll see you next time. And remember, take it easy.